Welcome back, fellow explorers to Project Markiraji. In this episode, we will explore the Dufogile forests of Markiraji. These forests are rich in resources and will host a vast menagerie of creatures. One of the first inhabitants of the Dufogile forests are the Fastella. These creatures are descendants of the Abitant Abuka. They spend their entire lives in their burrows, never leaving unless they are forced to. They feed by picking food particles out of the water. To avoid predation, they mimic the coloring of the Dufogile stem. If any predators see through their disguise, they will retreat into their burrows. They grow up to three feet long, and live for up to 15 years. Another equally well camouflaged creature is the Folgola. These creatures mimic the shape and coloring of a Dufogile, this allows them to go unnoticed by predators. They swim in schools of up to 50 individuals. Interestingly these schools have a social hierarchy in which there are up to two dominant males and up to 20 breeding females. The rest only stick around for the safety in numbers. But when a dominant male or female dies the lower class Folgola have a chance to move up the ranks. These creatures grow up to 8 inches and live for nearly 10 years. One of the largest creatures in the Dufogile forests are the Crastrum. Despite these creatures' sharp beaks, they are actually herbivores. They use their beaks to feed on the Dufogile and its descendants. They also feed on the Atifogile by puncturing their gas sacs and letting them sink to the sea floor. They grow up to 6 feet long and live for up to 25 years. Relatives of the Viata may also be present in the forests. One group may use their tentacles to crawl up the stems of the Dufogile. Most in this clade will be herbivorous, however some may use their tentacles for hunting. Like many animals in the Dufogile forests, these creatures sport camouflage. Their stripes allow them to blend seamlessly into the Dufogile stalks. We will call these aquatic climbers the Fucupenta. The largest species grow up to one foot long and live for up to 15 years. With all of these creatures living on and around the Dufogile, many predators are bound to evolve to feed on them. A clade related to the Abitantibuca may evolve to slither up the stems of the Dufogile. Once in a favorable position, they strike. They primarily prey on the Fucupenta and the Folgola. We will call these creatures the Arampilla. They grow up to two feet long and live for up to 10 years. Relatives of the Verarella are bound to be found in the Dufogile forests. Instead of grappling with their prey like the Verarella, these creatures may instead opt for a quick puncture approach. The teeth of their ancestors may combine into a spear-like structure, with one on each tentacle. When hunting they may curl up their bodies, and when ready they release, stabbing their prey. We will call these relentless hunters the Venalorella. They grow up to 4 feet long, and live for up to 20 years. With all these large creatures roaming the ocean, some creatures may evolve to capitalize on them. Smaller relatives of the Primanti may use their bristles to clean dead skin of larger animals. The problem with this strategy is that if one of these creatures tries to clean a predator, the predator may try to eat them. However, it is in the predator's best interest to get cleaned, so if these creatures can signal their intentions to the predator, they may be granted safety. They may accomplish this by evolving bright coloration to contrast with the Dufogile. These larger creatures may offer protection to their cleaners. 
we will call these creatures the Pectichrista. They grow up to 10 inches and live for up to 10 years. Relatives of the Folgola may take stealth to the extreme. Their already flat leaf-shaped bodies may be rearranged. Their bodies may become the collar of the sand. Their eyes will be positioned upwards to spot predators. When idle they will ungulate their bodies. This will kick sand up effectively burying themselves. This will keep them from getting spotted by predators and prey. Most in this clade are predators. When prey is near they will lunge out and grab them. We will call these stealthy creatures the Planator. They grow up to 2 feet long and live for up to 15 years. The last clade we will discuss today is the Probona. These fascinating creatures are related to the Cadolla, however unlike their ancestors they live a mostly solitary life. They have nearly lost the ability to swim, living most of their lives on the sea floor. To suit this lifestyle their fins have become extremely muscular allowing them to crawl along the sea floor. Their topmost tentacle has evolved a structure similar to an elephant's trunk. This adaptation comes with surprisingly high intelligence. They use their trunk to manipulate objects and even defend themselves. They can throw stones and even clouds of sand at predators to disorient them. The largest species grow up to one foot long and live for up to 20 years. The Dufogile forests certainly host an astonishing variety of life. From the clever probona to the strange Vena Lorella, life can be found in every corner. However, there is one environment in which only the toughest can survive. In the next episode, we will explore the Arctic ecosystems of Markiraji. A huge thank you to all the artists on Discord who made fan art for this episode. Your contributions to this project were invaluable. If you want to join the Discord server, you can find the link in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share your thoughts on these incredible creatures. See you in the next episode.